there, I'm Barbara Turley and you're watching another episode of Feminine Wealth TV. Today I am joined on the show by a girl who has left corporate four years ago with zero experience in retail and she's now doing million dollar months in her business. Please welcome to the show Jane Liu of Showpo. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome on the show. Thank I've been you. trying to get you on the show for a little while actually. I've been following you and all the stuff you've been doing. We just yeah. wanted to wait to get the beautiful office first. Yes, <laughs> yeah, we're in these gorgeous offices. It looks amazing. Thank yeah. you. So, Jane, I mean, you've been, you're a superstar. I've seen you, like, you've been interviewed all over the place. You know, you're really, people are really following you now with the success that you've had. But on this show, I love to sort of go back to, like, the beginnings because mm -hmm. people always see successful people when they've had success. Mm -hmm. But right back in the beginning, you actually had chosen a corporate career for yourself and yeah. wanted to be in the, in the multinational corporate world. Yeah, that's right. Tell me about that and sort of how that all started for you. So, um, you know, I've always, so I've always been quite academic mm -hmm. and, you know, as an only child, my parents kind of wanted me to, it, it's this like Chinese immigrants I was mentality. Say, Chinese parents. Yeah, yeah to yeah. like, um, to, you know, just really be successful in the corporate world. Like yeah. their vision for me was upper middle management. And yeah. for them, that was like the bee's knees. So um, ever since I was young, I've kind of, somewhat been conditioned and also I actually believe that I had an interest in commerce and finance and yeah. you know I did do well in those subjects at school so I was on that trajectory to just um, work in a multinational and my dreams back then was to have this um, yeah. you know work in a city skyscraper yeah. wear a suit every day and you know do the whole corporate thing yeah. which um, which I did so because I was um, did quite well at school when I was 18 yeah. I actually started working at KPMG which was my dream, which was at 18. my dream. So yeah. did, you, did you go to uni or did you just go straight in? And I was at uni part-time and yeah. I was full-time at KPMG. It was a cadetship program. Oh, so um, you, you were the serious corporate uh, yeah. you know, the career woman going yeah. the corporate <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, really like ambitious back then. So, and then once I started, I realized it wasn't, you know, I think it was great yeah. to have that I started so early because I realized quite early on that it wasn't really for me. You know, I love Friday night drinks in the city and, you know, yeah. the social side of it, but really just staring at those spreadsheets every day just really wasn't... Boring? Yeah, yeah it just wasn't, it, it lighting, me. It wasn't lighting you up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so when I was um, working, I'd, so when I... Um, just before I actually left my job, I spent... I was working at Ernst Young and I spent all my time on Facebook. Just, <laughs> Ernest you know, Young, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah. you look at that. You, know, you started the career. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I just hate. I just hated what I was doing. I loved, you know, social media. That's yeah. where I was killing my time. And you know, never did I think I could actually make a career out of that. Yeah, and, yeah. A, and as I say, a multi-million dollar business. Yeah. And that's why people are going to be really interested in this show. So. Tell me then, so you've got, you know, you've got this pressure to be this corporate world, you've decided that this is your, you know, path. When do you wake up and go, you know what, because it takes a lot of guts to say, I'm going to leave. Like, did you have an idea of what you wanted to do? Did you have a plan? Or did you just wake up one day and say, that's it, I'm out of the corporate, I've got to find something to do? Um, I think it was somewhat this young, foolish, like, <laughs> yeah. like, phase I was in. So I did have a business, at, like, my first business, mm. um with some other business partners that actually failed. And because the business partners I had were not working at the time, I felt this pressure to also leave my job. And I thought, you know, I should give it 100% um, to this other business. And within one month of actually quitting my job then, um, my, this business failed. failed. Um, yeah. At the time, I was devastated. I think, I, like you know, it's still like my personal rock bottom. Mm -hmm. um, that moment, but it was a blessing in disguise because soon after that, a month later, mm -hmm. I fell into this because I couldn't. I actually, I mean, I couldn't. It was more pride. I couldn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Calling back you to just the corporate to. world. Yeah. yeah so, because I. Had, what was the other business? Because you had business partners. What was that business? Was it fashion as well? Um, kind of. It was. Um, it was opening up emerging like uh, pop up stores. So, oh, okay. um, yeah. it mm. wasn't Blessing the best idea. Yeah, it wasn't well. scalable. We didn't really have a strong business model. Yeah. I think that's when we were just excited to have, you know, have a business rather than focus on. Mm you know, the actual core business itself. The actual doing. Whether the MPV works. So, yeah. you know, and I think it's great because I've learned so many lessons from that yeah. to which has led to where I am today. 
so what I love is I read about you obviously before the show mm. and was that during the period where you had actually given up your job and started these startups but your parents didn't know and they thought you were still going to the city every day to work in the corporate job and yeah, keep the, right. dream, the sort of dream alive yeah so I was um I was living at my parents because I just came back from overseas and I yeah. was broke so I couldn't you know afford to move out yeah. and um I couldn't possibly tell them that I've just you know left like, the high paying job yeah because yeah. they were so happy for me I was well ahead of you know mm. um where they thought I would you know, would be, and they were just so proud of everything I've done leading up to that moment. To tell them I've given it up, given everything up. I mean, they pretty much moved, immigrated yeah. to Australia for me. Yeah. Um, I couldn't possibly just tell them I'm going to start selling away. clothes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that exactly. would just be like the greatest yeah. devastation for them. And um, yeah, and to tell them I'm selling things online because for them, you know, but, on, yeah, the online it, it still seemed like the, this internet bubble that yeah, you know yeah. was in their minds. So. I literally just had to pull on my suit. So I used to go to work before them and come home after them. So I would have to pull on my suit, carry yeah. around my empty laptop bag, and just, you know, just wander around the city. Um, and go to a cafe or something? Or yeah, what? or I had um, a part time. I, I was working as a receptionist for a while just to make up some money. Yeah. And just, you know, just pretty much wandered around just kind of figuring out what my business uh, plan was. That must have been a bit lonely at that time. I mean, how, was, how did you cope with that and keep going? Because that's, you know, you must start to question yourself and doubt what you're doing. And Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, absolutely. I did have a, I actually um, had a business partner mm -hmm. for the first year of um, Showpo. Yeah. And we were Showpo back then. Yeah. So it was great that I had, um, you know, her to turn to. Yeah. But, um, you know, I felt this detachment from my previous my corporate friends so most of my friends are were working in corporate mm. and it was hard for them to understand also it was embarrassing for me to you know yeah. um you know have friday night drinks with everyone and talk about how i've just sat on my couch all week so yeah exactly. you know or just wander the city yeah. and like you know. i mean it's hard enough starting a business without coping with all that emotional stuff as well and the mm. emotional roller coaster of that yeah, yeah exactly so tell me as well so obviously you didn't have a huge bank of money behind you to start this business mm. you know and again i always like to talk to people and get into the nitty-gritty of like in the beginning, you didn't have investors on board starting out. You didn't have, obviously have a huge bank of savings behind you. Mm. How did you cope in the beginning? Um, I mean, you were living with your parents, obviously. Two-minute noodles, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. eating leftovers, um, yeah. sneaking wine bottles into bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you okay. just have to make do. So, I mean, I, yeah, I when I started the business, I had, um, I had like ten thousand dollars of fifteen thousand dollars of debt from um, quitting one of the jobs yeah. including KPMG because it was kind of like a cadetship scholarship program oh, right, okay. I had my hex debt which is 30 grand I had personal debt from traveling yeah. so um, the, my only um, my only source of funding was credit cards so yeah. um, I had to pull on that but it was quite I mean back in the days I, I mean it was a lot easier the e-commerce environment was actually a lot easier because mm. there wasn't this level of competition so yeah. you know I built my own website just by googling how to um, how to do it do HTML I mean you had to because you didn't yeah. have any money to do this so and at the time I think people had low expectations so it looked alright you know we <laughs> yeah. made money from it I think if you do it these days it's but how did you so you put a site up but you know the whole tr thing is the traffic and how did mm. you get people to the site then social media actually start selling yeah so yeah. that's that's where my you know years of wasting time on Facebook paid <laughs> yeah. off so it's you know I managed to um, bring in like all my traffic through Facebook and back then you know mm. without even having to advertise so yeah, back then it was easier too yeah because now exactly. it's really competitive on there yeah that's yeah. right yeah, yeah. And because now the bigger companies have caught on any yeah. um, anyone can open the store and mm. you know start advertising on Facebook yeah yeah so I mean back Back then, I think I bought my cons uh, bought stock on consignment. Because yeah, I was going to say the stock thing. So there's obviously That's like there's the, the hardest, setting up yeah. the business, right? So there's website and then Facebook to get stuff in. So all of that you did for free, kind of thing. Yeah, you did it yourself. exactly. But you're selling a product. So how did you cope with like again? Were there times when the financial strain was almost too much yes. to bear, or and how did you get through that? That's really the key, I think, that people will want to know. How do you get through that? Um, <laughs> Apart from two minute noodles and yeah, <laughs> do what you gotta do. I yeah, exactly. I mean, I remember once I had to, I couldn't afford to take take a taxi home at three a.m. after a night out, so yeah. I just walked home. It's only a fifteen dollar taxi, but on my way home I had flyers, so I let it dropped on my way back oh, home. Okay. I thought this yeah. will pay for my taxi next time. Yeah, right. but um, it's so it's all about the hustle, but um, I I think 
I don't know. I think it's kind of foolish. To be fair, I think it's kind of foolish to think that, you know, you can just get through without any money. It's kind of like that yeah. artist, you know, struggling artist kind of dream. Yeah. For me, um, I actually started to generate income when I opened a pop-up store. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like a kiosk in the center of Westfield. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I don't actually think markets necessarily do work. I mean, they do work for, you know, Sasabite, Sasabite and Samantha Wills and, you know, the odd few, but, and it is, you know, I tell most people it is actually a waste of time, but we managed to do really well because of, of this specific opportunity we had mm. in the 100 square store. And once we did got some money in the door for you. Yeah. And I think yeah. having that actual cash flow allowed me to actually pump up the, uh, advertising. Yeah. And it's great because by this point, yeah. you know, the website started being tweaked better. We had better photography. You know, I started to, um, you know, really learn mm. the ins and outs of running a business. And once we had um, some money in the door just yeah. from the store, we really like, I pumped up advertising and that's when you know, put all the money are... back into the business. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I think a lot of people actually out there are starting businesses on a shoestring, which is mm. fine, but they're focusing a lot on like the look and feel of the website, the branding, yeah. all this sort of stuff that really you need to get the money in the door. Exactly. And fast, like so that you can actually exactly. grow and, you And know. waiting for, and a lot of people I think spent, spend most of their money on the website mm -hmm. and also on stock whereas it's without the marketing there's no, there's no there's point nothing. having that website yeah. because there's such a competitive and cluttered and mm. saturated space you know in, on the e on the e-commerce commerce side of things mm -hmm. and um, you know people try and get their website to be perfect but that's only really, based on their yeah. views so without testing it with your customers um, like real customers or if you don't have any customers it doesn't matter exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you and so they it. and you know your product mix there's no way you're ever we still don't have our product mix perfect mm -hmm. and so there's no way you really will know when you start unless mm. you actually put your products out there to the market and just do it yeah exactly yeah. yeah and one of the things i loved about when i was reading about some of your philosophies and i mean i guess they've grown into philosophy <laughs> i absolutely love the one about the business plan yeah because i'm actually like i'm in the wealth space and i'm in the yeah. financial industry and all that and you know i really should be a fan of business plans yeah but i actually haven't done one myself either <laughs> i have a kind of a strategic vision plan and a year you know stages of the business that i would like yeah. to you know, see come to life. But I, I, I'm not really a big believer in. I've got friends who've put huge business plans together and they've never done anything with it. Exactly. Yeah. And or it changes too quickly. And you don't. Yeah. And then you get too um, constrained Rigid. by the actual. Yeah, yeah. By the business plan, because you don't want and. It, it, you actually use it more like a manual or a Bible, mm. and you know you're you working. Might have to change or you're shift working and, yeah. for the business plan. You're trying to get everything to be according to the business plan, rather yeah. than just adapting to the market, to mm. demand, to what your customers actually want. Yeah. So Plus I. Plus, it's just yeah. so boring. It's so <laughs> boring. I know it's so boring, and I think a lot of people get too caught up in stuff like that. When yeah. really, like you say, it's about sales, marketing, and listening to your customer. Yeah. And what do they actually want? And get out there and actually. Yeah. Do it it yeah. feels like a, sometimes it just feels like a school assignment you know mm. you're going you're looking at your SWOT analysis and you're oh, yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. Yeah. exhausting yeah, yeah exactly so tell me social media has been obviously one of the greatest things that has grown this business mm. for you tell me in today's sort of social media environment where are you see what would you give as like the top two or three tips that people in bi online businesses that you think work um, or what's been the secret of your success? How about that? Yeah. Well, okay. So I think it's really about having good content, not trying to sell to your customers. So I think that's a mistake a lot of people make. They feel like they need to, um, you know, constantly blast their newsfeed mm -hmm. with the products that they have. And but you have to think from a cus from a customer or a follower perspective. Mm -hmm. They don't care about your brand until they yeah, are get ready to buy. they're ready. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's really about building up that community. So once you build a community, once you build a community, then mm. if you sell to them, um, they're they an easier sell. Yeah. Once I think, you have them in the community. Yeah. Because if you, if you just, sorry, if you just blast your newsfeed with product mm. posts, your followers will not, they're not going to share your page or your post with their network. And that's yeah. ultimately what you want to do. If you have good content, they'll naturally share that for you. And that's how you organically grow. Mm. So, once you have a big following and you put up 
put out a uh, product post, that's it when you... Yeah, it, then you get traction. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you have a much bigger audience. Yeah. And so I say to a lot of, um, you know, startups or people who haven't, who are thinking about starting a business, don't wait until you have a product before you start... Um, oh, building your tribe. Building, like yeah, your exactly. Yeah. So that's what, um, you know, one of the questions I actually just received the other day was, how long can I, you know, just have a Instagram page for mm. before I have a product? Oh, you can years. have it for as long as possible. No one cares about your product yet. No, no one knows about your product. No one's holding their breath mm. until your product comes out. So just start building a community and yeah. you know, and start learning about what works or not. And the e and social media is so mm. easy to understand what works and what doesn't because you just look at your uh, engagement, engagement rate. Yeah. Exactly. And the thing I loved about what you did as well is this whole selfie thing. I mean, yeah. you know, this whole let me take a selfie thing. I mean, yeah. you got that going really, really well. And what I love about what you did is you brought your tribe or your community or the people who follow you into the kind of fold and people started taking selfies of themselves in your, the, yeah. your clothing line and posting them on your Facebook on, yeah. on the show pull Facebook page wasn't yeah, it, on exactly. the Instagram page and so, so you once, brought them into the whole engagement thing exactly and then so for other, and for other um our other customers, because the photos they're taking feeds into the product mm -hmm. um, of that they're wearing, our other customers can actually go onto the website and once they're looking at the dress, this particular dress, they'll see girls all different sizes and shapes, um, style differently. Yeah, yeah. Style differently. So yeah. it's you know it's it's a great community vibe. It's a, like it's a peer review system. Yeah. And it's not as boring as how reading do, reviews. How do you start that though? Because that's the whole holy grail of like how did you start that? As in, how, you know, how did you sort of get people to, to, was it just by themselves they started doing that or how did you do the um, creation of this engagement? Because you get like 90,000 people yeah. engaging on your page. I mean, back in the days, oh, I mean, I think back in the days we used to just, because we featured some people on our Facebook, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, in our spotted section, other girls, because they wanted to be spotted, you know, and we, yeah. we feature everyone. So, you know, it just started growing organically. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's, you know, it's in our flyer because, we're, oh, okay. you know, yeah, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, that's really, really clever. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about things like PR. Did you use any PR in the beginning or I mean you didn't have money for PR in the beginning or was it just have you ever paid for any sort of PR um, we have tried PR mm. I really don't think it works for us because mm. um, you know I think the I think the um, way of social marketing has changed now into mm. social into media. social media yeah. so like Instagram Facebook YouTube you know these are the areas that people are spending a lot of time rather than magazines so yeah, that's true actually yeah and the traction the traction you can get online is massive if you can get it right of course yeah, yeah. exactly so compared to traditional PR methods where you know if your product is placed in the magazine um, mm -hmm. y that's not measurable so some companies yeah that's the challenge yeah you, know, you think you pay all this money for advertising there and you don't know whether you're going to get any results from that exactly yeah so I mean f and then whereas like if you go if you send something to a blogger they feature it you mm. know like there's a certain amount of traffic they get you give them a coupon code there's you know you can see how much it's being used yeah, like yeah. it's um it's just much easier mm. to do it ourselves than working with PR. Mm. But um, traditionally, I think you know, there's also like websites like Source Bottle where you can send your press release. Oh, yeah. It hasn't really worked for us, but you know, but, uh, yes, I've heard it does for yeah. other people. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So tell me about so the business today is. I mean, you're doing the last two or three months. You've done million dollar months, mm. right? And I know you. You get kind of. How does it feel when somebody says that to you? Is it uncomfortable still? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's I can see in your face. It's hard. Was, yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was talking to someone else about their business and they had a 200000 a month and I thought, that's incredible, $200,000. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, but you did more. And I didn't even realize, yeah. until, like, it, it hasn't sunk in yet. It hasn't registered yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, obviously what comes with that, and I know we were talking off air, what comes with that is then everybody wanting to interview you, everybody wants to know who Jane Lou is <laughs> and how you did it, just like what we're doing here. How are you finding that from a personal perspective, like emotionally, and how do you find that... that um, well, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's flattering, but, um, I'm a nervous, like, I love talking in general, like, to friends and, yeah. you know, but I'm a nervous speaker. I yeah. kind of, I don't I have a, I, I get I don't that have too. a filter. I don't, yeah, I don't like, I mean, I, people have said, oh, you're really good at speaking, and I, I think, yeah, but I don't feel... 
it is uncomfortable. Mm. It's uncomfortable doing it. Yeah. You know? And it's putting yourself and your own name out there and your brand and all that. And all of a sudden, everybody knows who you are. And that yeah. actually brings with it its own challenges. Like, I'm not going to watch this video probably for a few months. Oh, really? And then I'll get a bottle of wine and then <laughs> I'll watch it. it. So that's what I've done previously. Yeah. And it's, I just, I can't, I cringe too much. And yeah. I, I think I wait until the, the point where. I feel like it's too late to have done anything to change it. Oh, right, and then okay, I'm okay yeah. to watch it. But then if you had had someone like you, when you started out, if there had been a video like this, mm. how beneficial do you think it would have been for you? Oh, absolutely. I yeah. think it would have been, um, you know, it, it's, it would be more motivating to, yeah. to see... Um, you know, someone my age who, who has had like a failed business, who doesn't have experience, yeah. who has done it, um, mm. you know, who can admit like it's not, it's not easy and I don't really, I don't always know what I'm doing. Mm. Well, most of the time I'm not sure mm. what I'm doing, but you just feel your way around. Yeah. yeah. And you know, once you build a robust business, you can afford to make mistakes as long as you learn from them mm. um, and you have a strong team, mm. you, you know. You can't well, the team is the other thing. I mean, how quickly did you bring on staff? Oh, probably too, too late. long. Yeah. <laughs> you waited too long. Everyone yeah. waits too long. Yeah. So, yeah. So two and a half years ago, I was still in my parents' garage, and wow. only because I wanted to go on holidays, um, I went to Miami for a music festival with friends. Mm -hmm. I actually hired my first person. Um, and then from there, very, very, very slowly started taking on staff yeah. to the point where, um, you know, in terms of the girls in the office, where eight, there's eight of us now, mm. but only a month ago, there were only six of us, so, which you're growing surprises really everyone. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're growing so quickly. I mean, it really surprises me that you only took staff on two and a half years ago, because it yeah. feels like this business has been... I mean, obviously now the way it looks, it looks beautiful, you know, and just, <laughs> Thank you. You know it's, it's, it hasn't been like that all the time, I know. It's, it's hard for, I think it's hard for anyone to let go of control because yeah. it's, and to start paying for, because like, you know, when you start, you're so poor, mm. every dollar counts, to start paying for someone who people, You could do it yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And but did your revenue explode after you hired somebody? It started exploding once I started um, spending more on marketing. Okay, so you just kept pushing money back into but the But definitely, definitely once I started hiring people, I was able to focus more on business development. Yeah, and, um, and marketing, doing more ideas marketing. and strategies. And yeah. Stuff, yeah, and um, the first, and that's the thing, the first thing you need to do is have good systems and controls and processes, mm -hmm. but when you're so busy doing everything, so I was, you know, doing the buying, yeah, doing the buying, like stock taking the clothes when I had time, Doing the photo shoot, steaming it, putting, uploading to the website, uploading to Facebook, uh, processing the orders, like yeah. taking all the orders to the post office, dealing with cust customer service, um, just a bunch of things. Um, and someone tells you, you know, you really need to put in good strong systems and write up some manuals to grow. Yeah, and you that's think, the, where am I going to find time to do that? Uh, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. the last thing you want to do. So, mm -hmm. um, it's, but it's, it's just something you have to force yourself. You have, yourself. To, you have yeah. to do that. Yeah. 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 And tell me, so mentorship. I know that you, I mean, I've seen you as part of the entourage and you were part of that sort of group yeah. for a while. What do you think of, of what you got out of groups like that and, you know, the mentorship idea? Did you feel that really pivoted things for you? Um, well, I've never actually had a mentor, yeah. I, um, but I was, I do like having that peer community. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I've, I'm part of a group called EO, Entrepreneurs um, Organization. Oh, yeah, and okay. so, you know, we have a round table where we talk about, you know, mm. important issues that we're having in our business. And, you know, it's it helps you deal with not just the business side of things, but yeah. also the emotional side, which Cause it is a roller coaster. Yeah, yeah, which people don't talk about. It's hard to. Yeah. You know, well, especially when you're successful, right? Because people would look at you and go, "Oh, well, look at her; she's doing a million dollars a month." Or what possibly could problem mm. could she possibly have? Yeah. But you know, you're saying. So, what are the kind of challenges that you face personally? Is it still just pushing really hard, or finding time for yourself? And you know, what are the major challenges you feel? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I think managing it's your just, personal life. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, mm. that's okay. I'm. I'm that's, I don't That's know. done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, you know, I think at some point you, you still, I, I forget sometimes that I have to, you know, be the team leader. And oh, yeah, you've got to, yeah, you've got to lead a team. Yeah, and sometimes it's and hard. And you're the helm. You're, yeah. you're like the one everyone's looking to for the vision. Yeah, yeah. and it's, you know, you do, when, when you doubt yourself, it's mm. kind of, that's when you had your hard days. And, yeah. you know, I think it's important to not get anxious about the yeah. little things um, because it is a roller coaster mm. um, and I think having a long-term perspective mm. um, 
you know, really, really helps. Do you feel actually just on that, like you're saying, the hard days, like the, the days that you doubt yourself? Mm. So you, do you still have days where you doubt oh, yourself? Oh, absolutely. That's really important for us yeah. to know. So that, like, even you have days that you doubt yourself. Mm. Yeah. And look how well you've been doing. Oh, thank you. You know? It's like, um, it's like this episode of The Simpsons, I don't know if that's the best analogy, where Homer is trying to invent things like yeah. um, Edison. And when he finally finds Edison's house, he realizes what Edison has been inspired. He's been trying to be like um, Einstein, and he doesn't feel like he's accomplished anything. So as you, the more you grow, the more... You well, know, you start to look to exactly. your vision expands. So it's it's just you never you're never satisfied, and that's mm. you know human, human nature. nature. So yeah. so you're looking at the next levels up of like yeah. Naomi Simpson of Red Balloon and all these people who exactly you know, are like mega. Yeah. So I think ultimately the trick is to you know work hard, mm. um, to have a great team, mm. and then when you're having a bad day, just turn to some wine and <laughs> not. Yeah. Like because I think sometimes you just need something to help you get over that moment. It's yeah. not like the end of the Do you world. just accept that? I mean, I think it's really good, particularly for us women, to realize that we all have those days. Yeah, and exactly. that that is you're not alone. That is just a part of it. And mm. on those days, you have to just go. You know what? Today's one of those days. Exactly. Today's that day. Exactly. And push through it in that way. Yeah, because yeah. I think one. To be honest, one of my issues is if I'm having a bad day, it, I, it comes out. Like it really comes out, and I don't want that to you know well it's the team then you've got to leave exactly the team, yeah, yeah. Well, it's hard yeah so but that's the challenge of growing to the next level exactly so tell me as a savvy entrepreneur as i've been telling <laughs> all of my uh, guests on the show what does the future hold for jane lou a um, big vision for you well for global domination oh really? yeah <laughs> excellent i love that Real um, <laughs> yeah one step at a time yeah. but yeah i think it's just to um keep doing what we're doing because we're i mean i'm having a lot of fun our team yeah. whole team we have a lot of fun mm-hmm. and um you know just to really build up this brand and you know into a global brand. Yeah, yeah exactly you know i have a virtual assistant who's in the uh, philippines and i was telling her i was coming to interview you today and she loves fashion oh really so i was showing her your site and everything and yeah. she's like oh that's so cool so she loves what you're doing and, oh, you know, thank so you. i'm sure the brand will grow massively all around yeah. the world <laughs> so if people want to follow you and they want to know more about shopo where should they go um so the website is yeah. shopo.com s-h-o-w-p-o yeah it'll be here right now yeah, yeah. <laughs> And our Instagram is I um, I love Shopo. I love Shopo. Facebook yeah. is slash I love Shopo. And if you want to follow my personal Instagram, yeah. it's the lazy CEO. And by lazy, oh, I, I don't mean like like sleeping on this couch lazy, but yeah. efficient. Doing, Good. achieving yeah. more by doing less. Oh, we'll definitely be following you for <laughs> yeah. some great tips. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you so much for being on the show. I really, me. I was really excited to get you on because as I said, I've been following you for a while and just your success has been very inspiring. Oh, very, very inspiring. So so thank you everyone for watching again for another week and remember you can catch me later this week on my podcast Wealth Unplugged where I'll be giving you my key tips that I've picked up from Jane today. Uh, Until next week, see you then.